can hear me. Say something in the comment section. Let me know you can hear me. Okay, we have five people. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, Champions League day today. Ah, voila for who want to watch Champions League go. Okay, um, we have 10 people watching. Okay, amazing. Welcome. I celebrate each and every one of you. Welcome. Welcome. If you can hear me, drop some fireballs in the comment section. Let me know you can hear me. Beautiful, beautiful. I can see all of you. Thank you for coming around. I can see all of you. Thank you. Okay, as usual, we're going to just give five minutes more for those to join. I'll be starting exactly at 7.35, right? So just kindly go on the group chat. Okay, let me go and um, open the group chat so that you guys can remind them that you can hear me. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I'm coming. Let me go on the group chat and open it so you can go and remind them that you can hear me. Um, give me a minute. I'm trying to upload my slides so you can begin teaching immediately okay okay amazing ah fireballs fireballs 16 people already have 16 people on ground okay massive welcome i celebrate each and every one of you um give me a minute okay Okay, so go to the go on the group chat and remind them, right? So we have three more minutes. Just get prepared. How was yesterday's section? Okay, use three words to describe yesterday's section for me. Use three words to describe yesterday's section for me. Amazing, amazing. Good evening, Tobechi. Tobechi, good evening. I celebrate you. Good evening, sir. Nedikachi, good evening, sir. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. I can see all of you. I celebrate you. I know today's match is not. It's not by force. You you miss it too. You can go and watch it. Yeah, it's you can really go and watch it. I'm not really saying it should be here. Thank you. So aha, uh -huh. good evening to you all. I celebrate you. I celebrate you, Mr. Isaac. You're here, Victor. You're here, Linda. You're here. I can see you, James. You're here. I celebrate all of you. Divine, you're here. I can see you. Best TV, you're here. Thank you. You were here yesterday and you're here again. Yes, there's a replay. I would share it on the group chat or go to the group chat. It's as if you're not paying attention on the group chat. I shared the replay on the group chat. You can always visit it. I'll share the replay again. Okay, amazing, 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 beautiful. So we'll be starting in the next one minute, all right? So Rita, welcome, welcome, welcome. Mr. Emmanuel, welcome, sir. I can see you. I celebrate you. I celebrate you, sir. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Amazing, amazing. Jemima, welcome. Lizzie, welcome. Emmanuel, welcome. I see all of you. Victor, welcome. I see all of you, right? So in the next few seconds, we'll begin with our class for today. Today is going to be a very, very short section. Um, like I told you guys yesterday, I'm a trained teacher, and I don't entertain and to, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like bombarding people with so many, with so many knowledge. Right, so please, um, today's going to be very, very short and straight to the point to so ensure that you're here to take maximum opportunity. Right, beautiful. Say TA is 100% than the match. <laughs> no, it depends on priority. Well, I'm not saying anybody should go and watch match, but then you know what you want to learn. All right, so it's 7.35 and we'll begin with our class immediately. All right, so let's get on started. All right, let me make my slides full so it's, I should be able to... Um, Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about candlestick analysis, right? I said candlestick. We're going to be talking about candlesticks. Okay, I want to make my screen big, bigger, exactly, beautiful. I believe you can see my screen, my slides very, very clearly, right? So today we're going to be talking about introduction to candlesticks. 
okay, where we're going to be learning how to read candlesticks like a pro. All right, so I want to ask you guys a question, right? For those of you that are here, I want you to ask, ask answer this question in the comment section. Let's assume you go to your, the day you start your primary school and then you want to start, maybe you want to teach a child how to read and write. What is the first thing you're going to teach that child? On the comment on the comment section, what is the first thing that that child is going to learn? Let's assume somebody wants to learn how to read and write, yeah? So what is the first thing that the person is going to, to, to learn? Comment in the comment section, let me know if you know what is the first thing the person is going to learn, yeah? Please, um, if you can, if you can hear me, if you can hear me. Okay, um, am I audible? I don't know. Uchechi says she can't hear me. Please, am I audible? Am I audible? Beautiful, beautiful. A, B, C, D, exactly. Alphabet, exactly. A to Z, beautiful, beautiful. Please, am I audible enough? Uchechi, okay, okay. Since you can hear me, Uchechi, please check your network connection, right? So that is just it. Anybody that wants to learn the alphabet or want to learn how to read and write is going to start from the alphabet. But then, like we said yesterday, learning the alphabet is a general kind of knowledge. Why? Everybody has access to that information. Almost all of, in fact, all of us here know our alphabet. But ask yourself, the fact that you know ABC, the person they pay you money, do you earn money because you know your alphabet? No. You earn money because you're using the knowledge you've gotten from the general knowledge to do specific things, right? So now the alphabet of cryptocurrency now is understanding your candlesticks, right? Just as you're going to learn about nothing we are doing today, the way I'm speaking today is because of I learned my alphabet very well. Had even I didn't learn about my alphabet, there is no how I'll be able to speak or write fluently. Yeah? Okay, so now, like I said, now candlestick is more like the ABCD of what of cryptocurrency. Whatever you're going to be doing in the crypto market today is dependent on how well you've mastered your candlesticks. But can I be sincere to you? The fact that you know about candlestick does not mean you're going to be rewarded. No, you know, go work that way. It's a, what a foundational or a building block for you to be able to, to do very well in your analysis. So all we're going to do in the market or whatever during the whole period of this, um, during your entire career as a crypto trader, is going to be rallying around candlesticks. Like I said, nobody's going to pay you for knowing about candlesticks, but what you're able to use the knowledge to produce is what rewards you, right? So in this particular trade, I'm going to teach you how to read candlesticks like a pro, okay? So let us proceed now. What are candlesticks? All right, so candlesticks refers to the pictorial illustration of price volatility of a particular crypto within a given time frame. Now, don't, don't, don't feel confused, right? Yesterday we said technical analysis is the ability to, 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 to look at price and price action and volume, historical price action and volume to know what is going to happen currently or probably in the future, right? So now, how do you know price? How do you know, how do you know the, the price volume? How do you know the price? When I mean price volatility, I mean the how price they move up and down. You only see a price they go up, Bitcoin is going up, Bitcoin is going down. How do you know that price of Bitcoin is going up and down? All of those information is contained on the candlesticks, right? So when someone tells you, ah, cryptocurrency is pumping, is pumping, is pumping, how do you know it's pumping? You're able to know it's pumping by looking at the charts. So looking at the chart, man, the candlesticks are what provide you with that information, right? So the moment you open your chart and then you're looking at your chart now, if you're knowledgeable about candlesticks, just by the arrangement of the candlestick, you should be able to know if the market is pumping or not, or if it is dumping. That is why I say candlestick refers to the pictorial illustration. Market the pump, market the pump. How will you know it's pumping? Look at the chart. Look at your candlesticks. Right? So I say price volatility refers to the, 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 the movement of price action or the movement of price. That is the upward, the upward or downward movement of price. That would mean by what? By volatility. Within a, a given time frame, pay attention to the word time frame. If you've studied, that's why. See, I, I told you guys about something that we call structured knowledge. If you're yet to watch that video where I explained how to your trading view, right? You might not be getting, you know, you not be understanding some of the things I'm saying here. So all my learning follows a serial arrangement. 
Because when I talk about time frame here, if you've watched that, if you've watched the video, you should, be, you should be able to understand that once you open your chat, you can change the setup of your chat to different time frame. We have the one week, the one day, the 30 minute, the, the, the different time frame. Right? We have different time frames. Okay, we have different time frames. So uh, on each of these time frames, we have candlestick that represent this time frame. So when you open your chart and you're on the one hour time frame, every candlestick that is there represents one one hour. So some of you must have opened your chart and you see those when you open your chart at first, those red and green things are what we call the candlesticks. So depending on the time frame that you are, that is what those candlesticks are representing. So if you're on the one hour time frame, meaning the price volatility within this interval of one one hour is represented on the chart. Don't worry, you're going to understand what I'm trying to say as we progress. Okay, I'm just trying to explain some certain things here, right? So candlestick are the what pictorial illustration of price volatility within a specific time frame. So if you open the one minute time frame, within that one minute time frame, you're going to see like the, the candlestick is like a living organism. You go see and I like, say they breathe. After this particular training, right? I want you to go to your time frame and then go to the one minute time frame. You're going to see the candle. You go see the candlestick is moving. It's like a life. It's like a breathing, a, a living organism. It's breathing. It's moving up, down, up, down. You, you see the movement there. If you're on a bigger time frame, like, like the one day time frame, right? You wouldn't be able to radially observe the movement. But when you go on the lower time frame, like the one minute time frame, you know, the one minute time frame means that everything, like the, each of the candlestick represents what is happening within one minute. And of course, you know, one minute is just 60 seconds. So within that one minute, you'll be seeing the way the price is moving. If it's going down, you see the market will be dipping. You'll be seeing within that one minute, you see the price of the asset is going down. And if it is pumping, you're going to see it within that one minute. You can also see it on the four hours, right? But on the four, because of it takes a lot of time, like imagine four hours, inside four hours and one minute, which one do you think is going to play out first? Definitely the one minute. Because one minute is just 60 seconds. Once, one, two, three, four, five, a next candle has formed, right? So within that particular time frame, the, 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 the volatility of that particular cryptocurrency asset is illustrated on the candlesticks. Right? This is the most useful component for a successful crypto trading career. If you don't understand your candlesticks, believe me, you, you're not going to go anywhere in this particular industry because everything you do revolves around candlesticks. Right? So let us proceed. Now, anatomy of candlesticks, right? Now, I want to show you guys anatomy of the candlesticks. For those of you that have actually taken your time to practice and to go on your trading view, you shouldn't be... Um, um, you should, this, this thing you're seeing on the chart and this red and green thing should not be fun. It should not be strange to you. Yeah, it shouldn't be strange to you. Why? Because that is what you're going to see on your chart, those candlesticks. Every chart have candles. Bitcoin, can, BTC has candlesticks. Ethereum has every crypto asset, even uh, Forex, they all have candlesticks. And all the candlesticks represent the same thing across all um, 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 financial instruments. Right? So when I mean anatomy of candlesticks, I mean the part of what of a candlesticks. Right? Because when you understand the part, those candlesticks, they are, they are not just randomly structured. They, they have their parts. Right? And of course, when we say candlesticks, just look at it like the normal candle, you know, the candle that you see rule. The, that can that fat candle, that white candle, which is on bone like a hand. Just think of it like that, because that's where it actually got its name from, right? So the first thing, the first part we have is the body. So I'm going to make an analogy with the conventional candle, in that white candle, you know. So the white candle, that white part you can hold is what we call the body. So you can see the illustration here too, right? So we have red and green candle here. So this red visible part you're seeing is the is what we call the body of the candle. Of course, you can see the illustration, you can see the, the markings there, the label in there. The red part is what we call the body of the candle, right? They also what the green part, they are called what the body of the candle, right? So how, how you know whether the market is pumping or dumping is dependent on the what on the body of the candle, right? Please, if you if you if you're following me, drop a yes, yes, yes in the comment section, right? The body of the candle is where the volatility shows. So if you say uh, Bitcoin is going up or is going down, it's the body that will show you the degree at which the Bitcoin is going down, right? If you're getting me, comment, yes, 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 let me know. You can hear me. Beautiful. Amazing, amazing. Okay. Um, I, I now have confirmations that we are together. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. All right, so let's progress, right? Now, the next thing we have is the week, okay? Think of your normal candle. That place with the on light. Is what we call the week. Look at the candle here too. You can see after the body, we have the week. The week is that small thing that is coming up at the top and at the bottom. You know, for the normal candle that we have, the week is just happening at one point. That's where you're going to light, just at the top. But in this particular um, cryptocurrency now, our candlestick have two weeks. 
one at the top and one at the bottom. So that's what we call the week of the what of the candle. Don't worry, I'm going to explain to you how these weeks form and how the bodies form. But for now, just understand the what the component of the candlesticks. We have the body and we have the week. Think of the normal candle you know. That place used to light. That's what we call the week. You're right? So that is the same thing that's applying here. Okay. And then we have the next part we have is the open. Okay, amazing, amazing. I thank you. I can see the engagement. Celebrate all of you. All right. The next part of the candlestick we have is the open, right? Now, what is the open now? Let me give you guys a clear illustration. Whenever all of us should agree with me that uh, when you're going to school, there's this specific time at which school opens, right? Even, even our church, our office places, there's a specific time at which we open. So when we say anatomy of the candlestick, when we say the open, remember I said the candlestick represents the price volatility of a particular crypto asset within a given time frame. So if we are, one, we are on a one hour time frame, right? If the time is 12 o'clock, the moment one o'clock, the clock one o'clock, a new candlestick will begin to form. That is on the one hour time frame. That's after every, a new candlestick is formed after every one, one hour. So at that particular moment that a particular candlestick begins to form, that, part, that exact price is what we call the open, right? So now the time is currently 7, 7.57, right? You can check your time. That's if you're in Nigeria, we have 7.57, right? So once it is 8 o'clock now, a new candlestick is expected to form on the one hour time frame. Now that exact price at which the candlestick is opening or is starting to form is what we call the open of the candlesticks, Right? So now, for the red and for the green candles, remember, don't worry, I'm going to explain to you guys the type of the candlesticks, okay? okay? But then, for the red and green candlesticks, they are open, they, they, they all, all candlesticks, whether it's red or green, they all have the same features, right? But because of the, but, 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 but their placement is different depending on which candlestick is forming. Now, I want you to look at this red and green candlesticks very, very well. You are going to observe that the open of the red candlestick is up and the open of the green candlestick is down. Just look at, if you can see what I what I just said, if you, if you can see, just write open and close. Or just write open, no, just write open. If you understand, if you, if you can if you, if you can see where, if you, if you relate to the fact that the open of the red candle is up and the open is, of the green candle is down, just type open in the comment section. Let me know that you can see what I am saying. Right? Type open. Beautiful. Tobit, you nice one. Type open in the comment section. Let me know. Exactly. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And now I know that you're following me, right? So you can see it now. Don't worry. I'm going to explain to you why it is like that, right? But then just for, for the sake of understanding the anatomy, just flow with me. So now just as we have the open, you know, so anything will open, go surely close. School will open. The school will also, what the school will also close, right? So then the close now is that particular time frame at which that, that particular price, sorry, at which that particular candle closes. So currently now we are we are we are, we are seven forty eight p.m. right, meaning that particular candlestick, the, the, the candlestick of seven p.m. is still open, is still alive, is still active. But when the when, when it is seven fifty nine, by seven fifty nine, the last price at which the the, the seven o'clock candlestick is forming is going to be the what they close, right? That's the last price for which, like I said, now remember, please, this is, it can be a bit confusing, but if you pay attention, you're going to understand it. Remember, I said the open is when the candlestick begins formation, right? Then the close is that particular price at which the candlestick what stops forming. So we are currently on 7.49. But the moment is 7.59, about to enter 8 o'clock, the current candlestick or 7 p.m. is going to close. That exact price at which it closes is what we refer to as, well, as the closing price. That exact price. If you can relate to this thing, type close in the comment section. Of course, just as the open... It's, it's a different situation at a different position for both candles. That is how the close is too. So you can see now for the for the red candle, the close is at the bottom, while for the green candle, the close is at the top. If you can just if you can if you can relate to this close illustration, I just give now, just type close in the comment section, right? So just as like we have your school, church, our school, our churches, our place of work, there's a time for opening as there's a time for closing. The same thing with the candles too. Right, the time at which they can, that particular let's assume it was seven o'clock at seven o'clock, dot a new candlestick will begin to form, and at 7 59, that is on the one hour time frame. Remember, remember, I said that well, there are different time frames. If you have studied your trading view, you don't understand there are different time frames. If you have the four hours time, just take it four hours intervals. So, after four hours, a new candlestick would form. So, since I, I, I think it's better I use the one hour candlestick so that it's better for me to illustrate. So, the moment we have seven o'clock, a new candlestick has begun to form. 
The one with the 759, that comes to that, that started for me one hour ago, will close. All right? Perfect. Ah, well, you guys are giving me massive energy here. Nice one, nice one. I, I see one of you, Sonia. I see one of you, Roland. I see one of you. Okay, so that's just it here. The open and the close, right? Now we have the high and the low. Please pay maximum attention. We have the high and the low, right? So let me still give you the loss. You know me, I love giving the illustration to make learning easy. Let's assume you go to school. You know, say, so get people who say they like to go to school. They not then be, not, 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 not then be, 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 be time. Should I call it not then be thank you? They just love going to school very, very early. They are very disciplined to go to school very early. Let's assume that um, school was supposed to open by seven o'clock and then the person went to school six o'clock. He went very, very early. Right? You know, someone can actually go to school very, very early. And then let's assume school was supposed to close by 2 p.m. And then the person, after school closed, the person can't stay, to, stay in school, stay for school till 3 o'clock. So you think that there's an extension. The fact that school closed um 3 o'clock, but the person extended his stay. So that is where we have the high and the low, right? So understand that if the, when a candlestick has formed, right, the price, so far as the candlestick has not closed, the price can be going up, 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 up. But the fact that the, 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 the high number represents the highest price at which that particular candlestick was able to stay, was able to reach within that particular time frame. Now, this part may be a bit confusing, but just pay attention, right? The highest point, maybe let's assume at 7 o'clock, a candlestick opened. Now, when that candlestick opens, you know, the, once it opens, right, there are two things involved. Is that the price will begin to go down or the price will begin to go up, right? So let's assume that the price begins to go up, it begins to go up, it begins to go up, and then it gets to the, the highest point at which the candlestick opened before it closed is what we call the what the high, the highest point, right? Now, look at it now. The highest point does not mean that that is the point at which the, school, the, the, the candlestick closed. Just like I gave the illustration with school, the fact that the student stayed in school till 3 p.m. does not change the fact that school closed by 2 p.m., right? It was a student that decided to extend to 3 p.m., but it doesn't change the fact that the school actually closed by what? By, three, by 2 p.m. So as the candlestick formed, as the thing got to the highest point, the volatility was not strong enough. Remember, I said volatility is the price movement, the up and down movement of price, right? But as the thing was pumping high, the price movement was not, the, the, the volatility, which the pressure was not strong enough to sustain the price at the highest point. So the price came down. So as it was coming down, the thing now closed. Yes, we admit the fact that the price has actually went a bit higher, but because of it, you know, it came down a bit and, and closed at a lower price, it does not change the fact that it has gotten there. It's more like it left a footprint at the highest point, right? So that is what the high represents, the highest point at which price um, was able to get to. So you can see now that on both candlesticks, the high is the same. You can see it high, high. If you, if, you, if you grab what I'm saying, comment high, high in the comment section. Comment high, high. Let me know that you're getting what you just understood this high concept, right? The high is the highest point at which price was able to get to, right? So the same thing with the low too, right? Comment high if you can relate to what I just said here. Okay, I have my eyes on the comment section. Let me know that you're, you're following and you're flowing with me. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Miracle, I see you. Isaac, I see you. John, I see you. Excellent. Okay, so we are together now, right? So just the same thing. The high is done. The, the, the low is the opposite of the high. The low is the lowest point at which the price got to within that particular time frame. Right? So let's assume that the candle opened at 7 o'clock. And the moment the candle opened at 7 o'clock, the candle begin to go down, it begin to go down. But as it begins to go down, the selling pressure became so high because what actually caused price to move is what we call the buying and selling pressure. If you if you don't understand this, I think you need to watch one of my, there's, there's a video I did and I explained that particular one, right? So you can just ask me, I will share the video. Where I say, what causes price to move? This price, when we say candlestick is going up or down, what is what is causing that is the buyer, buying or selling pressure. So when a candlestick opens, yeah, the candlestick opens, right? But then it goes lower than it opens. They maybe you can see the week now, the lowest point at which the price got within that particular time, even if not be the point where the candlestick closed or, 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 or open. But so far as it went lower than where it closed, we call it the what the low. Right? So that's just the anatomy of the candlestick. Like every candlestick on your chart has these features, every candlestick, right? You're going to get more information as we progress. Okay, amazing, 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 amazing. I can see all of you, Tony. Lizzie, I can see everybody. I can see everybody. Handyman, I can see everybody. Right? So let us progress. 
Now, we have types of candlesticks, right? Basically, we have two broad types of candlesticks. We have the bullish candlesticks and we have the bearish candlesticks. Yeah, we have the bullish candlesticks and we have the bearish candlestick. Now, what is the bullish candlestick? The bullish candlestick is that candlestick that signifies that price is going or price they pump, right? They call it the bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H. Type it on the comment section, type bullish and bearish candlestick. By bearish candlestick, bearish candlestick is that candlestick that indicates that price is falling, price they dump. So when you hear price they pump, if you check on your if you check on your chart, the, 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 you're going to see what a bullish candlestick. If price they fall, if you check on your chart, you're going to see what a bearish candlestick. All right? So so on your comment section, type for me, Glory Felix, please, can you hear me? Okay, I think you can hear me. Someone's already commenting what I said. So probably you check your network connection. Okay, John Smith is hearing me. I think they can hear me. So Glory, please check your internet connection, right? Exactly. Thank you so much, Roland. All right. So that's what we have the bullish and the bearish candlesticks, right? We have it here. Somebody typed it here. Okay. Exactly. So this is it. The bullish and the bearish candlesticks, right? So now let me say something. Now, you know, when you open your chart, when you open your trade view, by default, your bullish candlesticks are represented by the green. You know, anything they pump, they look, it's green now, like green. Green represents green light. No green light now, something is going up, it's pumping. And when it is dumping, it's only showing red. You know when they say uh, market on the market on red, <laughs> market is dumping, right? But can I tell you something? If you look at my chart now, my chart is black and ash. The, 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 see, the, the color has little or nothing to do with the, the, the type of candlestick. But just because of your starting, it's easy for you to maintain the conventional color, the green candle for the bullish candle, which means that price is pumping or price is going upward, or the red candlestick for the bullish, for the bearish candlestick, meaning price is falling. But the moment you begin to grow and you begin to understand these candlesticks, the color will not be will not matter again. In fact, I'm going to give you guys an assignment here. I'm going to use different color of candlesticks. But what is going to help you to know what which candlestick is which is the is the, what is the open and closing price? Yes. How are you going to know which, which candle is which candle, even if they change the color? For example, now my own candlestick, my own um, bullish candlestick is white, and my own bearish candlestick is black. Are you seeing it now? So it, it can mean you can decide to use any color that you want. If you're a pink and black person, you can use the pink and black. The idea is for you to know what the candlestick represents. All right? So let me explain to you guys how to know the, the, the candlesticks um, and how to know which candlestick is which whenever you open and you look at your chart. Right, so look at the first one. Now. The bullish, the bullish candlestick, which is the green one, is the candlestick that told, tells you that what price is pumping. Okay, and how do you know? Now, just by looking at the candlestick, right, you can know if it's a bullish or bearish candlestick. Number one, I said, look at, look at it. I, I have some figures over there. You can see 46. 46 is the open. Now, in the com common sense, we tell you that if something is pumping, it means the price at which it opened. The price at which the candlestick closed will be higher than the price at which it opened. Remember, I said the open is that particular price that the candlestick started forming. Since we are talking about a bullish candlestick, it means the price is what is going up. And since it is going up, it means the close will be higher than the open. That is the only indication that the price, the, the candlestick is a bullish candlestick when the close is higher than the open. You can look at it here. Right, my open here is 46. Mean price opened at 46. Now look at I'm going to be using values here, real values, to explain to you the component of what of a, or the anatomy of a candlesticks. Look at it. Let's assume this is a one hour time frame, right? Exactly. Now look at the time. The time is what is 7:59. If you go on your candlestick now on your chart, now, if you're looking at your chart now, the moment it is eight o'clock, a new candlestick would form. Look at the time is seven o'clock now. So mean the candlestick that opened one hour ago is about to close and a new candlestick is about to start, right? So if on a, on a one hour time frame, like this is eight o'clock, it means on our chart now, a new candlestick has start forming. I thank God that we actually uh, we actually have a, 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 it's like a coincidence now, but at eight o'clock now, a new candlestick start forming. So let's assume that this green candlestick is the candlestick, right? Is the press at which this particular candlestick started forming. Amazing, amazing. Ah, please, oh, somebody say my audio is not available. If you see I'm shouting at the top of my voice. Emmanuel said my voice is not audible, please. Is my voice audible enough? Because I'm, I'm honestly shouting at the top of my voice here. Is my voice audible enough? Please, my, comment something, let me know.
Let me not just be. Is my voice audible enough? Uh, let me be sure because I'm really, really screaming at the top of my voice here. Okay. Um, somebody should say something. All right. So, like I said, now since we're just talking eight o'clock, eight o'clock just now, right? If we're on a one hour time frame, right? If, means the, the, the open price will be 46. Look at the value there. We have 46. Okay. Um, I'm audible. So, Emmanuel, please, you check your, 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 your network connection. It's probably from your own end. Right? So look at it now. The open, which is when the candlestick began to form, is what 46. Right? That is the open. So let's assume that as the candle open, right? The candle begin to go down, begin to go down. Then it went to as low as 41 dollar. Remember, this is just an illustration, right? The candle opened at 46, but then still within this still within that particular one hour, still within that one hour, the candlestick went to as low as 41. But even as it went to as low as 41, the selling pressure begins to, the, the buying pressure begin to become so much that the price, the price began to began to go up. Now, for the fact that this particular price went to as low as 41, it means at, at some point, this particular candlestick that is, that is green was once red because it was falling down. It went to as low as what forty one dollars, and then for the fact that it went to as low as forty one dollars, I mean, at some point it was it was a bearish candlestick, but because of it did not close, rather it be, the, the the market began to pump still within that particular candlestick, and then the market began to pump, then the market began to want to show green, right? Remember, I said the lowest point at which the price went to is what we call the low. Which went that which we identified as, as 41. Then the market begins to begin to go up, it begins to go up, it begins to go up, and it went to as high as $54, which is the high. That's within that one hour. Let's assume this eight o'clock now, right? Within this eight o'clock, maybe from eight to nine, the highest point at which price was able to get to at that particular price is what is 54. At that particular time, sorry, is 54. That is the highest. But let's say, even let's say before the next candlestick formed, price began to began to drop small. And then the price closed at exactly $49. So you can see that the, for the fact that the price went to as high as $59, $54 on that particular time frame and didn't close there would, 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 does, does not mean that we're not going to indicate it on a candlestick. There's going to be what a footprint. So the week shows you the what the footprint. Right? So whenever you open your candlestick now, you can just look at the highest point at which the week went to. Right? So please, is my illustration very, very understandable? It's my illustration very, very understand. So the same thing happens with the, with the bearish candlesticks. So regardless of the color, the moment you see a candlestick, what you should look out for is the open and the close price. The moment the close price is higher than the what than the open price, it should tell ah, this is what this is a bullish candlestick. And then the moment the open price is the, the, the close price is lower than the open price, it should tell you that this is a what this is a what a bearish candlestick. Okay, so you can see it here. Right? So look at the illustration here. Look at the red candlestick. Now let's talk about the red candlestick. You can see the open. Remember, I said the, the open is what is up. And we said since it's a, a, a bearish candlestick, it means what the price is falling. The price opened, the candlestick started forming, forming at, at, at $65. Right? And within that $65, people are now, the, the buying pressure was a bit much. And then they were able to push the price to as high as what? At $70. So somebody will be like, ah, this candlestick. Now, now with what I'm saying now, but you should understand that you are not supposed to call a candlestick a bullish or a bearish candlestick until it has closed. Because the price can get to a, to a high point, but will not would, would still end up going very, very down. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. so people are understanding me, right? So thank you, Shalom. I see you, all of you. Maxwell, I see you. Eunice, I see you. Jordan, I see you. Right? So you can see the same thing happens with the, with the bearish candle. So like I said, you're not supposed to call a candlestick bullish or bearish candlestick until it has closed. Because anything can happen. A candlestick can look at it, it's going up, it's going up. Just like we have here. The, the price opened at 65. It began to go up. It began to go up. It went to 70. Then from 70, look at what happened. It's drastic fall. It fell to as low as $56. That's the lowest point it got to within that particular time frame. But before the candlestick would close, the price went back a little and closed at 60. Hence, for me, what a bearish candle, meaning the, what, the open price is what is, is higher than the closed price. It's common. This, this, this thing, is, is, this thing is, is common understanding, right? Just look at That's why, see, technical analysis, but no, be something that is it's not really difficult like that. It's when you begin to look at it. With the, that's why I say it's, people that, it's people's perception. People have kind of made you feel like this thing is difficult. 
So your mind has begin to be like, ah, this is difficult to like your mind is already shaking. But calm yourself down and anytime you want to attend my training. Because I'm going to try as much as possible to explain things to you. It's just like four months we had in school. See, maths knows how to, but because of you, you've always been hearing our uncles or your auntie complain that ah oh boy, maths hard do subconsciously and unconsciously your brain begin to say, ah oh boy, this maths hard, this maths hard. So even when they're supposed they are teaching one plus one that is very, very simple, but because of somebody at home has told their maths is hard, before you know your brain will begin to say, maths is hard, maths is hard. Before you know something you're supposed to understand, you're not going to understand it very, very fast. So always come open-minded and ready to learn. This is just common sense, and you're going to understand it, right? Right, so let's 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 progress. Let's progress. Okay, so candlestick formation and arrangement. And that's the next slide now. I know a lot of people will be like, ah, when they when they open their chart, you think that all of these candlestick are randomly uh, 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 formed. They are not randomly formed. How many of you know what a relay race is? Probably when you were in secondary school, you know relay race. Uh, is it, is this button race now? If you know relay race, just type relay race in the in the comments. Let me know you know what relay race is. This kind of race that is a group, it's, it's, it's not just one person that's going to run the race. Probably if we have 400 meters race, there will be four teams. Each participant is going to run, each, each teammate is going to run 100 meters and then it's going to hand over the button to the next person. If you know, really just comment relay race, relay race in the comment section. No, you're not going to know when it is closed until it has closed, right? Your own work is to do your analysis and allow the market to play, right? Okay, relay race, exactly. We, we know what you're saying, right? So we know what that, that's what we call relay race. Now, you agree that in a relay race, right? Exactly. You agree that in a relay race, a, a teammate does not start running until his, other, until his previous teammate has given him the button, right? So there's a point of contact. So that's how the same, that's how the candlestick forms too. All what you're seeing, once you open your chart, right? Those candlesticks are not just forming haphazardly. There's a point of contact. So before a new candlestick will begin to form, it must have there's, there's a point of connection. That is why I say that now, now you look at it. The, the, the close of a candlestick is the open of another candlestick. Does this make sense? Right? You no, know, remember now previously we are we, 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 we the time the time is eight, eight, eight minutes after eight now, right? There was a time we were what we were to, to eight, seven fifty-nine. So at that seven fifty-nine, it was an old candle. Now, at the price that that seven, at the price that the previous candle closed, it's going to be the price that a new candlestick would form. Just like a relay race, a new candlestick will not begin to form until the other one has closed, right? So the close of the previous candlestick is the open of a new candlestick. That is the point of exchange. So using the relay example, that's the point at which the button has been exchanged, right? Please, if you, if you, if you, if you just get this illustration, like this, what I just said now, just let me know. Right, so the candlesticks are not haphazardly arranged. They are what, look. Look at what I look. Just look at look at this my chart now. I just did. Look at the first three green candles. You can see that what they are, they are connected. Remember, I say green candle mean what the price is going up. Look at it. The first green candle formed. It went up and it closed. Of course, you might not understand this now. Don't don't struggle. Watch this video a second time. Probably use your. See the way I learn is about. I wish I, maybe I will, I will screenshot my book and send to you guys. I will draw the candlestick on paper. I'm not just going to believe that I understand it. I will draw it on paper to understand it very, very well. I will have green and red marker here. I will color it. Yes, I will color it. We will learn the crude way to make sure that we get good results. Don't be forming too big. You're, 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 if you have younger ones or siblings around the way, like, uh -uh, big uncle is using crayon. Use crayon, my brothers and sisters. So far as you're going to get what you're looking for. I have green. I'm going to show you. I will share my pictures. I have green and red. I draw them. So don't think maybe the, I got this knowledge by, by just looking at it. No. There, there has that effort, that commitment. So look at, back to this chart now. Look at these three candles now. Look at the first green candle now. The market was pumping. The price at which the first green candle closed was the price at which the next candlestick opened. You can see there's there's no gap. They are all, they are all connected. So don't think maybe uh, the, the candlestick are exactly beautiful this is just it this is just it the close of a candlestick is the open of a new candlestick right so let's assume we're on the one hour time frame now and the time is what 8 or 10 the moment the time is 8 59 that last price the last price at which this current candlestick now let's assume on the on, on the eight o'clock right the last price at which the candlestick close is going to be the the price at which the other candlestick would form just have the idea of what of a relay race before the candle begin to form. It must first of all what collect the button. Now collecting the button is going to be what on that same price. Although they are very very special occasion where there's a jump, 
the, when the price action is when the when the volatility is massive. Okay, when 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 the volatility is massive. Okay, when the volatility is massive, there's a phenomenon we call. Okay, when the volatility is massive, there's a phenomenon we call the jump. Maybe when the when the buyer pressure is so strong, probably at that at that window period, maybe when the time is eight fifty nine, maybe when a new candle is about to form, then we have an influx of buying pressure. There's going to be what a jump. But those ones are very very rare cases, All right? So this is just I'm just trying to explain to you that the, the formation of candlestick is not random. That right? it's what it is structured, right? The formation, the close of a previous candlestick is the open of a new candlestick. Right, so let us proceed now. We're wasting so much time here, but we're gradually coming to the end of the can of this particular course. We have the features of a candlestick. These features helps describe the strength or weakness of a particular candlestick. Remember, I said candlestick shows you what the volatility, right? So there can be what high volatility or low volatility. So you can discover that probably within the period of eight o'clock to nine o'clock, price pump well well. How do you know that price pump well well? It is by the features of the candlestick. That's how you know whether you have a weak candlestick or a strong candlestick, right? Candlestick shows you the, the price volatility, yes, but then there's a way you can know which one is actually a strong volatility volatility or a weak volatility, right? So the size of the body, the things that you need to consider for you to know whether it's a weak or strong candlestick is the size of the body of the candlestick, size of the weak of the candlestick, shape of the candle and the combination Right, I'm going to be explaining these things in the next couple of slides. Okay, I, I have massive. I have people that are, are following me. Okay, Max, so don't worry. I'm going to send some charts on the. Don't, I'm going to give you the assessment. Okay, then we're going to practice. All right. So let us let us go. Okay, size of the body of the candlestick. Look at it now. We have A, B, C, D. We have E, F, G, H. You can see what the different size of the candlesticks. All right. So now tell me now inside this green. In, Look at the green candlesticks first. Inside A, B, C, D, which one do you think is the strongest candlestick? Which one do you think has highest volatility, the strongest? Comment just on the comment. Tell me which one is the strongest from A, B, C, D. Among the green candlesticks, tell me which one has the highest volatility. Which one is the strongest candlestick? Which one has the highest volatility? Comment it in the comment section. A, B, or C. A, B, C, or D. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. A, exactly. This is a very, very sharp person. All right? Is it? It's just not. Let's see. Listen about Isaac. Nice one. Right? See, this thing is just common sense, yeah. Yeah, this thing is just common sense. The size is just like now. Uh, you, you want let's assume you're, you're in your family and then they want to share bread. <laughs> Sorry, I'm using this illustration, but just want to make learning better. Then they are cutting the bread. Which one you think is the, 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 the if if you're asked to choose first, you would most likely go for the biggest can biggest bread. Why? Because it is bigger. You go belly food, you pass. So the same with candlesticks, too. The bigger the candlestick, the stronger it is. So for the bullish candlestick, now once you see a big green candlestick or whichever color you want to use, right? Once you see a big candlestick, it means at that particular time there was high volatility there. It was the strongest candlestick. And once the candlestick begins to become small, know that that's what there's a sign of weakness. So the moment the candlestick begins to become small, know that ah, the upward movement goes so stop, right? And once you begin to see big, big green candlestick, know that ah, this price, this thing, if it pump, go where I don't know. If you pump, go the moon because the candles are big, big. But when you begin to see small, small candlesticks, begin to have at the back of your mind that most likely the pump is about to stop and the dump is about to start. The same thing happens with what? It's E, F, G, H, right? So just as we have the strongest candle as our A, so so for the green candles, the strongest candle is what is the H. It means what they dump massive. If you see a red, that's, they, they call it a deal do. I don't know the spelling, but they call it a red, big candlestick. They call it what a deal do. So whenever you see massive red, red candles, you know that ah, the dump huge. Those of you that are familiar with lunar crash, go and look at lunar price uh, about how many months ago? Let's say five months ago or seven months ago. You will see some red, red candlestick. You, you will see the price is falling from zinc. You will see it jump from zinc, from two-story building. So the bigger the candlestick, the stronger it is. Uh -huh, my guys, my guys, you guys are getting value. But Tony, well done, sir. I celebrate you. All right? I hope I'm not wasting your time here. Right? So this, this is how you know what the strength of a candlestick. And you can see how, if you're very, very sensitive, you see how I just give you a hack of knowing when price either want to stop pumping or when when, when price want to stop dumping or it want to start dumping. Sorry, what am I saying? When price, wants to, when price is pumping and it's about to start dumping. But when you see big, big candlestick and you begin to observe small, small candlestick, 
begin to pay out. Ah, um, this one very small candles on the form. It means say price goes on start the dump. You begin to prepare for a sell or you begin to sell off your assets. Right? Of course, you don't just use candlestick in isolation. There are other confirmations, but this is just the foundational knowledge. Okay, so let us proceed. Size of the wick of a candlestick. Okay, now I need to now let, let me tell you some things now. I, I think I missed this one. But a wick, okay, what what is to cause a wick is what we call a rejection. Okay, what cause what normally cause a wick is a what is a rejection because for example, now you know a wick, a wick, a wick is how you know they were the high or close, right? The week is what we the, the week represent either what either the what the high or close of a particular candlestick. Now, where we have a long week at the top, maybe when the price go to the highest point, but it failed to close at that point, and then the thing begins to drop massively. It means the price was rejected at that highest point. Point, right? So if you see a long candlestick at the top, that means that there was a massive rejection. Okay, so you can see, just look at my illustration. We have A, B, C, D. You can see the, what the long, the, the candlestick at the top is, is long, long, it's reducing. Then at some point, D does not even have any candlestick. Does not, sorry, does not even have any wick. You can see the one, the one that has the high, among this first green, this first bar, this first group, the one that has the highest wick, the longest wick is the what is A. A has the longest wick, right? Followed by B, followed by C, and D does not even have any wick at all. Yes, there are certain cases that some candlestick might not have any wick. And of course, what I said is that a week indicated was a rejection. Maybe the price pump too fast, or maybe there was a manipulation and the price over pump. Then when the regulation begins to force the price to go down to, maybe when the price begins to dump, dump, dump within that specific time frame, then a week would form. Remember, for the fact that the price has gotten to a high level, and even if it does not close it, but the fact that it got to a high level, there has to be a, what, a landmark, there has to be a footprint. So the week is what shows us the, what, the footprint. And of course, since I say the week indicates rejection, right? The size of a week, right? The size of a week, where when the week is big, it means that that candlestick is weak. Preserve at the back of your mind. A big week means that what there's a, that the, the, a when the when the week is too long, it means that that particular candlestick is what is weak because there's a rejection. This particular one might be a bit confusing, so please do not stress yourself if you don't understand it. Just force yourself to go and study, right? So this is it. The size of the week also tell you which one is strong, which one is um, which one is strong, which one is weak. All right. I don't want to say if I want to uh, begin to explain something, it might confuse you guys now. So this is more like a, what a charge for you to go and study. I'm going to recommend a website at the end of the day that you should go and study. So you able to understand candlestick very very well. Okay. So this is just it, right? I don't want to say so much because it might confuse some people at this point. Okay. This question says, can we also say that the bigger the candlestick, the bullish the market? While the smaller it is, the no, no, have it at the back of your mind. A bearish candlestick can be big, yeah, glory. Yeah, a, a, a bearish candlestick can be green. Like you can see a big red candlestick. The fact that if you see a big red candlestick, will you say that the market is, is bullish? No, it means that the, 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 the selling pressure is in favor of the downside. But when the market is when you see that the, the, the biggest candlestick are the are the green green candlesticks, it means that what the market is pumping, right? So you say what the green can the, the, the bigger the green candlestick, the bullish the market, yes. And then the bigger the red candlestick, the bearish the market, the more bearish the market you get. So the the, 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 the size of the candlestick or the size of the candlesticks is dependent on the color. So if, if the predominance, um, um the, 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 the most predominant candlesticks are red and they are big, big, it means the market is dumping. And if the predominant candlesticks are green and they are big, big, it means the market is what is pumping. Okay, thank you for understanding. I think Gloria has gotten understanding. All right, so let us pro proceed. Okay, now another thing you need to know the strength of candlestick is what is a combination of what of candlesticks, right? A candlestick can appear one like a, a, where we call a candlestick pattern, right? This is now all of us what we call candlestick pattern. That's a lecture, a, a, an entirely different lecture on its own. Remember when we were talking about task segmentation and, um, and task segmentation? I said technical analysis has different parts. So chart pattern and candlestick pattern is a different thing on its own. Right, so a combination of candlestick can tell you which one is strong. So the, we can have the, the candlestick can come one one like maybe you, you can read meaning to a single candlestick. You can read meaning to when the candlestick come together, right? You can read meaning to when we have three candlestick coming together. So a combination of a candlestick can tell you the degree of pressure that we have. So sometimes you know if you look at your chart, right? I want to just this night, but take time and study the chart. You can discover that sometimes you might have 
green candlestick, red candlestick, green candlestick, red candlestick. Now, when you're having green, red, green, red, the market is not really strong. Like that's the combination. The market is not really strong like that. Even if the market is progressing upward, it may not really be strong like that. But when you have green, 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 ah, uh, you can have like, you can have consecutive green, green, green. When the market, when the when the pumping is massive, right? So that's when it's coming as, as a combination. Right? When you have green, red, green, green, red, red, green, it might be strong like that, but when you have green, 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 there, one red, it means that the market is seriously pumping. And when you have red, 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 there, maybe one small green, red, 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 it means the market is dumping really, really hard. Yeah? So a combination, so this kind of, this kind of to, 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 to interpret this kind of right, they can actually come as a, as, 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 a, as a single entity, or they can come in twos, or in group of threes, or even as many as they want. Right? So you can actually read this candlestick to get meaning from them. That's going to be a lecture for another day, this candlestick, uh, candlestick pattern. I don't know if I would have time to do it for, this, for the period of this free training, but those that actually um, learn directly from me, I taught them all of these things. But of course, I'm going to recommend a few resources for you guys to go and self-study. Like I told you guys, we live in, a, in, a, in an age of information abundance. They learn on just opera to teach you cryptocurrencies and error. I'm trying my best to teach you, but I cannot, I'm not, I'm not self-sufficient enough to give you all the information you need. That's why I recommend for you guys and people to go and study from or, or, or website to go or YouTube channel to go and study from. So it's up to you to go and study and gain value. Me, I'm, I, I say it unashamedly. I know the shame to say I'm not going to teach you everything by myself. Even me myself, it's not one person that teach me. So it's going to be an error for me to come and brag that I only me can teach you. No, I can actually guide you, mentor you. Yes, but then I will recommend go and learn from this guy. Still, he start from his own from his own grace too. Okay. So uh, this brings us to the end of the section. I don't know if you got massive value. Okay, thank you, um, Glory. I, I I appreciate this comment, right? So um, we have come to the end of this um, this particular candlestick. This is supposed to be a twenty minute video, but see, we don't spend almost one hour. If you got value, please type value, value, value in the comment section, and we'd call it a day, right? So I'm going to be giving you guys some assignments on the group chat. <laughs> I can see the funny assignment you guys did in the last one, right? But then I'm going to be giving you guys some assignments. It's going to be very, very simple. You're just going to identify for me which candlestick is which, and it's just going to be an easy assignment. Just try, trust as much as you can to do it, right? So um, for more info, if you want to learn more, right, I'm going to recommend a few resources for you guys go on go to babypips.com look at the name there baby pips they will teach you like baby you you the, the, the learning can even can even annoy you sir, because they'll be teaching by you think maybe you're what are you like what did, did, did i tell them that i'm a baby because they actually broke it down very well right um i have a question here he says uh sir please can you relate the weak feature of a candlestick to a bullish and bearish candlesticks okay um let me go back okay um the week. Um, I can't really relate to this particular question, right? But Naomi, please, on the group chat, right? Just ask this question. I don't want this session to be too long, right? Ask on the group chat and I'm going to respond to you on the group chat, right? Just ask on the group. Just copy the same question and then we're going to ask it on the group chat. Value, value. Thank you so much for being around till the end of this section. We didn't have so much turnout as we did yesterday, but then we have 41 people currently available and that is a huge number for me, right? This is massive. <laughs> so go to baby peeps, right? And of course, aside from baby peeps, you can go to Reina Tio. Let me spell it. Someone should type Reina Tio for me in the comment section. Um, Reina Tio, exactly. So you guys should go to this guy's YouTube channel, right? This guy dishes out massive value on candlesticks, right? He even has one book like that on candlesticks that is very, very helpful. Okay. So go... Look at it, Renatio. Go to Renatio channel and go and learn as much as you can. Go to babypips.com and study and go to Renatio's YouTube and also go and study. Right, this kind of thing, this is something that you took. See, if I tell you how it is, it can be the most annoying thing to learn. But once you give it like one week, see, this thing, but don't be in a hurry to learn it. Right? It's not when I give a sign, it's not in a hurry to drop it. No, take your time. Get your book. Like I said, I'm going to share. I'll, immediately, I'm done with this session. I'm going to share my my um, my my notes or to you guys on the group. So you guys know that we are not playing here. If I tell you guys I I study like a kid to master this and make you know that I'm not playing. Right? Question, question, question. Um, Victor, please let's ask the question in the group chat. So it's easier for me to. I don't want this session to be too long. I want it to be more than. And this is supposed to be a twenty minute class. Though. Like I remember this this slide I showed it to you guys now, but this is a slide I used to give my those that paid me. I just took out some small stuff, but this is the slide I used to teach people that actually paid me. I'm giving that to you guys so that I can help you guys understand. And of course, you guys can um, make money for yourself. Okay, so it's on this note that I've come, we've come to the end 
of this section. Thank you so much for being around. And um, of course, see you guys tomorrow. Like I said, we'll be having an extension, probably a day or two, make sure we're able to cover more concepts, right? So until then, see you guys. Bye-bye.